Hello and welcome. According to Outperform Sports, on June 6, 1986, at a small track meet in New, New Brandenburg, Germany, the discus world record was broken. Not only broken, but shattered by a throw of 243 feet, more than 81 yards on a football field, by Jürgen Schultz, an Eastern German discus thrower. Obviously, you do not need to throw the discus at the world level caliber in order to reap the benefits of this productive sport. You simply need to begin. In order to begin, it is pivot all that you know, it, know exactly what you need in order to start. You uh, are able to illustrate how to do the throw correctly. And finally, you're able to describe how you can benefit from this, not only in the body, but also the mind. To begin, the most important part of throwing the discus, and something you absolutely need is, you guessed it, the discus. I prefer using the Gill S80, which is an 80% rim weight discus. Now, you may not know what rim weight is. Rim weight essentially is the amount of weight placed on the rim. For beginners, according to Throws Lab, it is recommended that you use 60 to 70% because it, push, it puts less pressure on your fingers at the release Therefore, it's easier to throw. But as you mature in your technique, it is pivotal that you, uh, that you go to higher rim weight so that you're able to get more spin, creating a helicopter effect, therefore getting a couple more extra feet. Next, you'll need throwing shoes. As track spikes are to runners, throwing shoes are to throwers. Throwing shoes have a soft, smooth bottom that allows you to pivot on your foot easier and be able to uh, have a better energy transfer because of their thin soles into the ground. And finally, the last thing you'll need is a ring and a net. Now, this is probably going to be the cheapest thing because it's free, and you'll be able to find it at many high schools, some middle schools, and also some parks actually have discus rings, surprisingly. Now that you know exactly what you need, you're probably asking me, how, how do you actually do the throw? Now the most important part of the throw is holding the discus, and it's also probably one of the most trickiest, because there are a lot of misconceptions about holding the discus. Some people think that you throw it like a frisbee, other people think that you kind of under sidearm it, but really, you take your hand out, you kind of curl your fingers a little bit, and you rest the edge of the discus on the tips of your fingers, like so. And uh, now that you know how to hold the discus, the next part of the throw is the stand throw. And this is very important for beginners according to the United States Track and Field Cross Country Coaches Association because it mimics, it's a very easy movement that mimics the final part of the throw, the release. So what you do is that you basically plant your right foot down, you put your left foot about halfway in the middle of your right foot, you get into shoulder width, you swing back, you have your right arm facing back, you have your left arm putting the disc on a shelf, and you first rotate your uh, right knee in, you bring the left arm up, you pull it in, and then you release, and you make sure that the discus rolls off in a frontwards motion, to create the better spin. A lot of beginners have it roll back, but that's wrong. Now before every throw that, uh, every full throw that I take, I do half turn drills. Half turn drills are important because they require balance and stability and help you learn the actual mechanics of entering the circle. And so similarly to your stand throw position, you'll get into a similar position, but instead of moving out like this, you're going to move forward by bringing the left leg to the ankle and pushing it through, like this. Now that we know the basics of the discus throw, let's look forward and look at actual one of my competition throws. So what I did first was that you, I swung back into this position for a full throw. Then I released, I opened my left leg and making sure that my left arm doesn't beat my right, my left knee. Then I switched, put all my weight on the left, and then entered the middle of the circle. I then got uh, jumped in, did basically like the half turn where you kind of switch onto your right leg, got stacked like a stand throw, 
pushed up, and then released. And this is what it looks my throw looked like in an actual competition. Now you're asking me, I know how to do a full throw. I know exactly what, what things I need in order to uh, be able to be successful in throwing, but how will this benefit me? Throwing benefits you, according to DoveMed.com, by increasing your cardiovascular strength because it works many different muscles in your legs, uh, calves, and uh, even your hands. And the same reason is why it increases your muscle mass because it requires very, um, a lot of explosiveness from your legs, core, and shoulders. It also requires a lot of flexibility and mobility because of the positions that it requires you to get into. And finally, it gives you a sense of a peace of mind. This is because it focus, makes you focus on being in the present moment and, being, and just thinking about the throw. And as quoted by Aristotle, excellence is not a habit, or excellence is not an act, but a habit. So this can be applied to many different things in your life, because if you try to perfect everything in your life and you try to be perfect, then it doesn't, it's not just simply an act that you have to do, it becomes a habit. From this presentation, I hope that you, like most other people, consider throwing to be art in motion and that it represents something more than just throwing, but years of hard work. In this presentation, we've discussed what you exactly need to throw. We illustrated how to, um, how to do a full throw. And then we, finally, we, we talked about the benefits um, of, the, of throwing to the body and mind and how to apply it in your everyday lives. Thank you and happy throwing.